Good afternoon, everybody uh, here in the hall and joining us online wherever you are. Many thanks to Omar Dernt and to Hugo Ticciati, as well as to Siglo Doro and Patrick Allies for such a beautiful, moving sequence of comfort and of hope when the entire world needs hope more than ever. It's Wigmore Hall's gift to all of you today, and I'm sure it will have uplifted, consoled, and inspired you as much as it has me. You'll be hearing much more of both outstanding groups in the seasons ahead. Three years ago, in March 2020, this hall was empty, locked down, closed to the public, and totally silent. Since then, we have all lived through difficult, uncertain times, but the hall has survived, and in many ways, is refreshed and revitalized with tens of thousands of new young audience members since the pandemic. It's a place so many cherish, not only here in London, but millions globally, especially online. Your shining generosity as members and supporters in the UK and overseas has been a lifeline for us. And despite great international turmoil and upheaval, we be begin to look with renewed confidence now to the future. Last year, when we launched the 22-23 season, we highlighted that audiences were still lower than pre-pandemic. Happily, we are more or less back to normal, but significant challenges remain. We begin planning now for the long term and a more independent Wigmore Hall. This is now the home of the largest classical music series in all four nations of the United Kingdom, and the result of our collective efforts here in recent years is that only 3% of our funding comes from the public purse. We are 97% self-sufficient. However, as, as we all know, public funding is precarious with many strings attached and can be complicated or even taken away on the whim of policymakers who come and go. In recent months, the unnecessarily destructive cultural vandalism in our own land has certainly made the headlines. <laughs> and the past few pandemic years have shown us we really never know what is around the corner. It's best to be prepared, and an endowment is certainly a good idea. Wouldn't it be an incredible achievement for all of us as custodians of this very special place to get that up to 100% sufficiency before too long. Later this year, we will launch a plan to do just that. But this afternoon, I'll focus only on the announcement for the season ahead, some 500 concerts and hundreds more learning events underpinned by our annual audience appeal and other vital gifts. We should be buoyed by the rousing chorus we heard earlier from Alexander's Feast, which incidentally premiered not far from here at the Covent Garden Theatre in 1736. The many rend the skies with loud applause, but music won the cause. Rest assured, great music will always win the cause at this address in Wigmore Street. We need to bring in £4 million or more in ticket sales next season and £3 million in fundraising. A tall order, but one with uh, your help we somehow managed to achieve. Our audience in the room today and online is our secret weapon in doing all of this. Every ticket you purchase, every gift you give us, every legacy pledged, all get us to where we need to be. And remember, it's never too late to remember us in your will, that is, until it is actually too late. <laughs> so I say this in a week when the Spectator magazine describes attending a concert at Wigmore Hall as a good reason for staying alive. <laughs> we cannot thank you enough for all you do for Wigmore Hall, but I need to ask you to do more. I don't think it's a huge penance to ask you to buy more tickets. So come back to the hall more often, bring your family and friends, and share with them what we have to offer. Hopefully, when I unveil the program in detail, you will be greatly tempted. Please consider upgrading your support if you can, and in particular, giving to our audience fund which we will write to you about in the days ahead. It's an unrestricted fund which champions new composers and important artistic projects, our broadcasts online, and our outreach and our learning programme. 
which provides music-making opportunities for people of all ages and backgrounds, including some of the most marginalized, deprived, and isolated people in our society. It also helps us to pay the essential bills and run the building in this extraordinarily difficult inflationary period. We're very grateful to all the members and all the circles of support represented here today, from those who give us 50 pounds right up to 50,000 pounds or more annually. Your trust and confidence in Wigmore Hall has been transformational for chamber music in London, particularly over the past decade. And so to the 23-24 season. The opening week from the 7th of September is akin to a mini festival with appearances from the much loved Sir Stephen Huff in a typically varied opening night recital. We also welcome Dame Mitsuko Ushida and Jonathan Biss, co-directors of the Marlborough Festival in the States, in, the music, uh, by, in music by Schubert for a piano duet. And the first Sunday morning concert of the season is the Doric Quartet performing Schubert's final string quartet in G from 1826, a year of illness and uncertainty in the Austrian composer's short life. Lithuanian soprano Asmik Gregorian makes her Wigmore Hall debut in an all-Russian programme, and 21st century works are to the fore in a concert from Ensemble Moderne, conducted by Sir George Benjamin, as well as appearances from the remarkably sparky American string quartet Brooklyn Rider and the energetic London-based string ensemble, the Twelve Ensemble, later that opening week. We celebrate epic women Baroque composers with soprano Roberta Invernizzi and a merry band of French and Italian musicians. MacArthur Fellow, pianist and writer Jeremy Denk begins a residency in the company of the Danish String Quartet, including Schumann's Piano Quintet in E, flat opus 44, and the legendary Georgian pianist Elizabeth Leonskaya joins us for Brahms, as does Janine Janssen. Songs by Sergei Rachmaninoff and by his colleagues and followers are celebrated right through the season, and we welcome two very special singers in residence, soprano Louise Alder, whose first performance this year will have a distinct French flavour, and the arresting Macedonian-Canadian uh, mezzo, Emma Nikolovska, is joined in recital later in the year by Sir Andra Schiff, so much part of the fabric and the essence of this place. Our celebration of the Jewish-Soviet-Polish composer Weinberg, which was interrupted by the pandemic, is resumed and includes his string quartets uh, paired with those of Shostakovich. The Nash Ensemble brings us music from the regions of Bohemia and Moravia, written in the 1800s and the 1900s, and later in the season, we remember Sir Harrison Birtwistle. Celebrity recitals in the season include visits from Wigmore Hall favourites like Stephen Isserlis, the incredible octogenarian Jordi Saval and his ensemble with music from the reign of the first Queen Elizabeth, and Norwegian soprano of the moment, Lise Davidson. We welcome Polish countertenor Jakob Józef Orlinski, who also happens to be a break dancer in his spare time, Hilary Hahn, who packed the hall to capacity last week, pianist Paul Lewis and Schubert, harpsichordist Mahan Esfahani in Lots of Bach, the keyboard concertos with the Britain Sinfonia and the violin sonatas with Antje Vitas, and Czech mezzo Magdalena Kozina, who returns with Mitsuko Ushida in an interesting 20th century French programme. Born in Brisbane in 1961, our season composer in residence, Brett Dean, had already won a reputation as a viola player before he began to compose at the age of 27. We celebrate his chamber and his vocal music following the huge success of his award-winning opera, Hamlet, first heard at Glyndebourne in 2017 and at the Met New York in 2022. A major announcement is the appointment of Solomon's Knot as our first ever Baroque Ensemble in Residence. This long-term relationship begins as we mark 300 years since Bach's appointment as Cantor in the Thomaskirche in Leipzig. They offer a prelude on the 19th of June with the St. Matthew Passion around the corner in the beautiful church of St. James Spanish Place, so book if you haven't already, and they return here to Wigmore Hall in December with Bach's Magnificat and Cantatas from that first winter in Leipzig. Pianist Boris Giltberg uh, brings his remarkable, critically acclaimed Ravel series to a close in a joint recital with violinist Alina Ibragimova, and his next project is an extensive Chopin series, and that commences 
in December. And our work extends well beyond the confines of Wigmore Hall. The London or the Wigmore Hall Festival, a unique collaboration with the Royal Academy of Music in Dublin in its 175th anniversary year, celebrates the opening of Ireland's first purpose-built chamber music venue, the White Recital Hall, part of the recently re redeveloped Royal Irish Campus. So Wigmore Hall's artists and programmes will cross the Irish Sea throughout September, whilst in Paris, at the same time, young singers will take part in the Wigmore French Song Exchange, so we're definitely keeping in with the neighbours. <laughs> Great pianists include the Berlin-based Igor Levitt, Angela Hewitt in a special Mozart series, Maria Zhao Pirish in Schubert, and 19-year-old newcomer Young Chan Lim, whose debut here in January attracted half a million views on YouTube alone. We also have a very rare appearance from Evgeny Kissin. The young and the brilliant Leon Coro Quartet, first prize winners at the 2022 Wigmore Hall International String Quartet competition, join us in October. And taking its name from the German title for Mendelssohn's Oratorio Elijah, the Elias Quartet performs a very rare cycle of Mendelssohn's string quartets. The best international string quartets are here right throughout the season, including the Jerusalem, Belsha, Pavel Haas, and Takash quartets, to name just a few. We continue our annual celebration of Africa in two days of programmes with the African Concert Series, exploring music in the classical tradition emanating from that vast continent. The season also sees the appointment of a new associate artist, singer and composer, Eloise Werner, who recently took over the hall for International Women's Day and was described by Richard Morrison in the Times as classical's new queen of weird. <laughs> Wigmore Hall's BBC Radio 3 Monday lunchtime concerts are broadcast live and live streamed on our website, underlining this most important partnership. And we celebrate the outstanding impact of the record label ECM, now over 50 years old. We continue commemorations for the 400th anniversary of the death of William Byrd. And other highlights include uh, Belly's born uh, composer, pianist and vocalist, er Erilyn Wallen, in a celebration of her own works. And from other traditions, we welcome Amjad Ali Khan for four Indian classical concerts in July, whilst jazz pianist, Brad Meldow includes a new commission which he has written for us and for our friends at Carnegie Hall. I could go on and on about the programme, but all that would do is that I've kissed the Blarney Stone a bit too much. So I cannot mention the diversity of everything ahead, but it has been a huge privilege for me and an honour to devise this series and its arc and its artistic themes. The season brochure speaks for itself, and I'm told at this very moment available online, and the autumn programme is now also being uploaded to the website. So please look for yourselves and book for the riches of human creativity that we're so fortunate to experience here week in, week out. Tomorrow we'll also see the launch of our, across all of our social media platforms of a special trailer narrated by broadcaster Zeb Soans, focusing primarily on our pioneering learning programme. So please do watch out for the Audience Fund appeal letter in the coming weeks. It comes with a donation form, so there's no need to read the letter, just fill out the form. <laughs> and uh, if you want priority booking, do join the Friends of Wigmore Hall. All that's left for me to say is renewed gratitude to you all for everything that you do to keep this place buzzing. And it is buzzing. We look forward to welcoming you all, either in person or online during the exciting season ahead. Thank you very much indeed.